Yo, 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 what's up guys? Welcome to another full PC build guide. So the year is 2022 and we're gonna kick it off with two budget builds. The first one is a $750 budget where we're gonna be doing here today. And then the upcoming one is gonna be a $1,000 budget. These two build guides are gonna be full tutorials, which means I'm gonna show you how to do everything from start to finish. So first we're gonna be going over the parts, how much we paid for each one. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build the PC step-by-step step all the way through. Second, we're gonna be installing all the drivers we need so everything's up and running. And then last, we're gonna be putting it to the test against a lot of current popular titles. Our goal for this build is to make sure we have our eSport titles running at at least 144 FPS for the 144 Hertz monitors. I'm really excited here today because we haven't done an affordable build guide in a long time. Both this build guide and the upcoming $1,000 build guide are all gonna feature parts that are fully in stock at legit retailers. But anyways, guys, let's jump into it. So for this build, we're gonna be using a GeForce GTX 1650. This card does not require external power. It's a popular card to just pop into PCs that are already built. It plays games at respectable frame rates, four gigabytes of VRAM. This card cost us $325. This fit into our budget nicely. It's gonna get the job done. So for our CPU guys, we're gonna go with Intel. This is the 10th gen. It's in an i3 model, the i3-10100F. It's a four core CPU that ran us 90 bucks. So it's a very affordable CPU that will support our GPU. It also comes with a stock heatsink, so we didn't have to spend more money on a cooler. It's already included with this CPU. What we're gonna be inserting our CPU into is the B560 chipset. This motherboard is the micro ATX form factor, and it does not have Wi-Fi. So if you do wanna rock Wi-Fi, you're gonna have to purchase a USB adapter. I don't use Wi-Fi, guys. I'm always using wired ethernet connections. If you do want Wi-Fi built into the motherboard, they do sell a Wi-Fi model, which is only like a few extra bucks more expensive. The motherboard was $110. So again, very affordable price. Moving on to the RAM. We went with our trusty Vengeance LPX by Corsair. You know, the traditional 3,200 megahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, 63 bucks. Great value for the money. Now for our storage, we went with WD Blue, M.2 SSD, 500 gigs is what we're rocking. M.2s are lovely because their installation is so convenient, very easy. So moving on to the juice. This is EVGA's 650 watt bronze rated B5 power supply. Now we don't need 650 watts for the parts we chose. We can get away with a 500 watt power supply, but the reason we went with 650 watts is because if you wanna upgrade your graphics card, you don't wanna be asked out and have to replace your power supply as well. This will support future graphics card upgrades. It's also bronze rated, so you know you don't want your power supply to die, guys. It's very important. If this dies, it could kill other stuff. You don't wanna cheap out on the power supply. You want it to last a long time, and that's what this thing right here is gonna do for us. 50 bucks. Not bad bad our case now this is a lovely little simple elegant micro atx form factory case by thermaltake it's the s100 tg we chose the black colorway and this guy right here ran us 70 bucks so let's take a look at this case beautiful little simple panel and i'm assuming this is yeah it's secured by magnets guys not bad i like that first impression it's good we're gonna be adding a second fan to this, guys. Actually, let me go get that right now. All right, guys, so we have ourselves here, a 120 millimeter fan from Arctic, the P12. This thing runs about 12 bucks. This will help out our airflow. And you already know, we had to go with a Funko Pop. And for that, we went with Lil Neo right here from the new Matrix movie. This Funko Pop's dope. We're, of course, gonna be adding RGB LED lighting inside our case to make it pop. That's about it, guys. Those are all the parts we're gonna use. And total price of all our parts is 757 USD, not including the fan we just added on. So yeah, this is a great starter build to get you into PC gaming as well as competitive PC gaming. It will run popular esport titles at 144 FPS. But yeah, guys, let's do this. We're ready. First, we're going to be working with our motherboard and our CPU. So let's get our motherboard out of its box. These are SATA cables. We're not going to be using them for this build, but we are going to be using this IO shield. So we want to get that out. And here's our board. Let's go over the ports. Not much compared to what I'm used to. It does have a type C port, three USB, 3.0 port, so pretty good. Also, this board features four RAM slots. So you're gonna be able to upgrade to more RAM in the future. And now let's get our CPU out. Make sure not to touch the pre-applied thermal paste. And here's the CPU. All right, so we have our i3-10100F ready to go. We're gonna push this to the side and then all the way up. And as you can see, there's an arrow on our motherboard and there's also an arrow on the CPU. So that's the placement it needs to go. So that's how we're gonna be lining it up. Arrow with the arrow like this. And I am going to just drop it in and it's all the way in. You're free to give it a little wiggle. All good. We're gonna wanna get this under the screw and push this all the way down and in. This comes off. So now we have our stock cooler here. We're gonna line up the four points, four points on the motherboard. 
and the thermal paste is already pre-applied, guys, so you don't have to worry about that. And once we have it lined up, we're just gonna press down. First, I'm gonna do opposite sides. All right, both of these are in there, and I'm gonna do the other two sides. You should hear it click in there. It's all good. Now we can just pick it up, and it should look like that on the back of your board. All these things just clip right in. All right, so now to hook up the fan of the heatsink, we're gonna hook it up to the fan header on the motherboard. It's labeled CPU fan right by the RAM slots. And here's a closer look. So you can see it's a CPU fan down there. All right, now let's get our 16 gigs of RAM in here. Okay, so we're gonna pull back the levers on the second and fourth slot. So it only goes in one way. We're gonna line up our first RAM stick. When we have it lined up, we're gonna push down on both sides with our thumbs. Both of these levers raised and clicked in. Same thing for the other stick. And again, let's push down. There we go, both sides clicked up. The reason why we placed the RAM in every other slot is so the RAM could run in dual channel. Okay guys, so now we're gonna be installing our M.2 SSD. We're going to need to get out a little screw. That's located in our motherboard's box. Here it is. So installation of our M.2 drive is very simple. We're gonna put it right into the M.2 slot all the way in and then we just push it down and secure it with the screw. And there we go, our M.2 drive is installed. Now we're gonna be securing our motherboard to the inside of our case. So the case accessories are usually located in the drive cage. Same thing for this one. We're not gonna be using a hard drive for this build, guys. So it's gonna remove the drive cage from here so we could have more space to work with. Okay, so if we take a look at our micro ATX form factor motherboard, we have three points on top three points in the middle, and then we have two on the bottom. So we wanna make sure that the motherboard standoffs inside the case are in the appropriate positions, and they actually are. So the motherboard's already ready to go in. First, we have to install our IO shield. We wanna make sure we put it in the right position. So the ethernet port, which is this, is gonna be on the right side. I clip it in on all four sides. It's good to go. In goes our motherboard. We wanna line up the ports with the IO shield. And once that's it lined up, then I set down the board and I line it up with all the standoffs. Now I'm gonna secure it with the screws that come with the case. I'm gonna be using these screws. I'm gonna do the middle one first. All right guys, our motherboard's fully secure. Now we're gonna be installing our power supply. This is a fully modular power supply. So for this build, we're gonna be connecting very few cables to our power supply. We're gonna be connecting one CPU power cable. It's labeled CPU. And then the main 24 pin power cable is labeled MB for motherboard. And that's it guys, only two cables. If you had a different graphics card, you would have to connect the VGA power cable to power the graphics card. But for our GTX 1650, it doesn't require any extra power from the power supply. All the power it needs, it gets it from from the motherboard. Most graphics cards are actually not like that. The 1650 is just unique in that area. So let's connect the motherboard cable first. Make sure it clips in all the way. And our CPU cable. The side that's labeled CPU is what goes in. So for the CPU power cable, you connect the end that doesn't split apart. The other end does split apart. We're gonna put our power supply inside of our case with the fan facing down. The screws we need to secure the power supply come with the power supply. Perfect. So now we're gonna be attaching our extra 120 millimeter fan to the front of the case. There's the screws and I'm gonna put it in with the cable wired to the back of our case and we're gonna secure it like this in the middle. Our fans installed in the correct position, it's gonna be intaking air. So we're almost done guys. Now we're gonna be connecting cables. We have two sets of cables. The cables that are part of our case and then the power supply cables. We're gonna start it off with the power supply cables. So first we're gonna be connecting our 24 pin power cable. We wanna make sure that this clip is secured back here. I'm gonna line it up. Once it's lined up correctly, we're gonna push until it clips. Next one is our CPU power cable. Now same thing with our CPU power cable, we want the clips to be secured on top. And push in, and there we go, all the way in. So now guys, we have our case cables and the front fan, and then the fan that came included with the case. We're gonna start it off with the case cables. The first case cable is labeled HD audio, and it only goes in one way. So in our case with the HD audio, text facing down, that's in. That cable connects your headphone and microphone jack of the case to the board. Next is the USB 2.0 cable. Again, goes in one way with the USB text facing up. Goes in right there. Now we're gonna be hooking up our JFP1 cables right here. So these are all the ones we're gonna be connecting. First, we're gonna be connecting the HDD LED one. If we turn it around, we see an arrow. We're gonna have the arrow on the left-hand side and we're connecting it to the bottom left pins. Now the next one, we're gonna be connecting the power LED cables. The plus is gonna be on the left, the minus on the right, and that's gonna go right above the cables we just plugged in. 
Next, our reset switch. We're gonna connect this on the bottom next to the HDD LED cable. So it's right next to it, and it doesn't matter what way you plug it in. There is no positive or negative. And for this one, the power switch, there also is no positive or negative, so you just plug it in right above the reset switch, whatever way. And there we go, our JFP1 cables are connected. And our final cable is a USB 3.0 cable. We wanna make sure that this little bump needs to be lined up right here make sure it's lined up right you don't want to bend the pins on this one and there it is all right now we're going to connect both of the fans of our system to the motherboard with this two-way fan splitter so the front end of the fan splitter is going to connect to a system fan header on our motherboard let's find it and it's located right here by our jfp1 cables so i'm gonna plug it in and wire it to the back and on the back of our case it's going to connect our front fan to the splitter for our second fan, it doesn't quite reach. So we're gonna hook up an extension cable to the fan up here and into our splitter. There we go. And all these cables will be linked in the video's description, guys. So now we're ready to install our graphics card, our GTX 1650. Here it is. It's a little GPU, but it does push frames. It's kind of cute because it's so tiny. Want to make room for it? We're going to be removing the first and the second brackets. And for this case, you don't unscrew them. You just have to bend them out like that and then just rip it off there we go bending up and down and there we go so to install it we're gonna push back this lever all the way and we're gonna line it up with our pci slot and the bracket and once it's lined up we're gonna push it in and the clip will come back up now i'm gonna secure our graphics card with two screws these screws came with the case all right that's in now we got to get neo in there rocking his gamer shades so we'll put them right there all right guys well there we're done with the main stuff this is of course optional but i'm going to be installing rgb led strips and we're finished now we're going to connect it to some juice and let's power it on for the first time it's working so congratulations if you were following along our $750 build is now complete and it's looking good. Now we got to install windows and some drivers and then we're ready to start fragging it out on this thing. Also guys, if you haven't turned on bell notifications for the channel, be sure to do so so you can be alerted for the future build guides and future builds that are going to drop. I'm ready to get everything installed on here so I can start getting some gameplay for you guys. Let's do it. So first we're going to install Windows 10. Then we're going to install our motherboard and our graphics card drivers. Next, we're going to install Steam and some games. And then at the very end, we're going to go into our BIOS and make sure that our RAM is running at its rated speed because by default it's not and you want to get your money's worth for your RAM kit. So first things first, we need a USB flash drive with Windows 10 on it. I made a video tutorial on how to create one of these or you can just purchase one from the store like Best Buy. So I plugged it in and I'm going to power on our PC. It's not going to boot up to the flash drive. We just click next. I don't have a product key. Windows 10 Pro, I'm gonna select custom. If you had more than one drive hooked up to your PC, this is where you would choose where you wanna install Windows 10 onto. We only have a single M.2 drive, so we know what we're picking. So right now it's copying all the files over to our M.2 SSD. Once this process is complete, our system's gonna restart. Windows installation is done. We're free to disconnect our flash drive now. Okay, we've arrived at our desktop. Let's start installing some drivers. So we're gonna head over to our motherboard's website. So I'm using Windows 10. I'll post a link to all the websites we're gonna be visiting. So the drivers we're gonna download is gonna be this one right here, our HD audio driver. Under chipset, I'm not gonna download any of these. Under LAN, I'm gonna download the LAN driver. And then I'm gonna go to utility and download RGB Fusion to customize the light strips. So I moved our drivers to our desktop and we have to unzip all of them. So I can delete the zipped ones now. Here's all our motherboard drivers. Now we're going to install all of them. These are all installed now. Let's install our graphics card driver. We're gonna download the GeForce Experience program, which installs the most up-to-date drivers for us. Download, the new God of War is out. Maybe we'll try it. I haven't played it yet. Now we're gonna install Steam. This is one of the clients to download games. So we're in my Steam. You can see I'm balling one Whoa. penny in the account. We're about to splurge on something. We're gonna do it guys, why not? We have God of War now. That's what we're gonna be installing. There you go guys. Once this is done downloading, just restart your computer and you're ready to start playing if you want. To, but we need to do one more thing. We need to make sure our RAM is running at its rated speed of 3200 megahertz. First, we need to restart our computer. As our computer is restarting, we're going to keep clicking delete on our keyboard. All right, we're at our BIOS now. So as you can see right here, our RAM is only running at 2133 megahertz. It's not what we want. So let's go over to advanced mode. And right here, we're already on tweaker. We're going to go to extreme memory profile. We're going to click disable. And we're going to change it to profile one. 
that's all you need to do we're done now we're gonna go to save and exit save and exit setup yes so now to check we'll do control delete task manager open up more details performance go down to memory and as we can see it's now running at 3200 megahertz that wasn't so hard right here we go guys so we're playing god of war on the low settings graphics preset at native 1080p resolution and it gives us 60 fps exact and we're gonna be playing it on the second hardest difficulty so i can only take a few hits like there you go i just took two hits and there's 50 percent of my health this is my first time playing this game by the way oh something's gotta open that gate i got this never mind thank you very much it's our first boss battle our first boss battle this game is not very uh, mouse friendly when it comes to the sense. It's just weird. It is a PlayStation game. What do you expect? Oh! Oh my god. I'm dead. Oh yeah. I know how to beat him now. Oh! Okay. I stunned him when he was about to attack. Yup. That's how you do it. Spam this. It's not working. It's not working. <laughs> There. Got him. Yeah, we did it. Oh. That's where you get it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so that was God of War. Runs native 1080p at 60 FPS. All right, we'll continue this game in the next build. So we're gonna be playing CSGO at 1080p. Here are the settings. So for Siege guys, we're running the game at 1080p, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, FOVs at 90, and here are our graphic settings. Boom, Mike. Where is he? Oh my goodness, man. And that's how you do it. Yeah! I'm pleased with the FPS we're getting in Siege, so guys, I mean, it's above 144. I want to play it at 144 hertz, so we're good to go. Oh, yeah, you got a blitz. Oh. Oh. All right, man, you got this ace. <laughs> uh, maybe we should try an alternate route. That route does not seem to be safe. 10 seconds left. <laughs> Do it! Do it! Come on, kill me! I'm here! Come on! Do it now! Kill me! We're gonna wrap it up right there, guys. Thanks for watching this video till the end. I appreciate it. All you guys support. I'll catch you guys in the next build guide coming real, real soon at the $1,000 price point. All right, guys. Peace. <laughs>